Alvaro for this opportunity. We have okay. Now, thanks a lot. So uh, I think I should have uh, to make some excuses because I will talk a little bit of uh, it to be more mathematics and uh, but then there are some talks already by some people on similar <laughs> on similar topics, so I will avoid excuse myself. The thing like uh, Constantino Tsali said, where well, we talk about entanglement entropy, so this is pretty much enough to discuss quantum device. Okay, uh, so my main talk will be this entanglement entropy in fermionic chains. This is what uh, work that I did with people in Spain, in Saragossa, and uh, I mean the important guy here is this student, Filiberto Ares, who pretty much made all the uh, hard work, let's say, no, and then uh, so I should, uh, he's finished PhD next year. Uh, well, again, based the same as Constantinos de Sales, he was advertising some uh, black hole. Uh, I come from high energy. I s all this motivation to study entropy and entanglement entropy that I have been doing that for many years now come as a motivation in because of the Bekenstein hawk in entropy. So let me just flash a little bit and complement what uh, Constantino said the other day. The, okay, we know there is this uh, area law for the entropy, but uh, that the Hawking found uh, back in Bekenstein also, but uh, how it is associated to entanglement entropy was uh, first discussed by Rafael Sorkin and collaborators in 86. So the whole idea is that uh, we know that black hole is a region that you have no access, so they try to understand the following situation. Now I have my field, my degrees of freedom is spread over space, and then I try to remove a region of this space. In terms of the field theory, I have to integrate out those degrees of freedom associated to this region. Now, if there is some correlations between these degrees in freedom inside this region and the outside, right? You want to know how this correlation, it scales if I scale this uh, region. And then they discovered that the discorrelation function in a very simple model of this scalar field that we can numerically uh, model by coupled harmonic oscillator, it scales with the area of this, uh, the boundary of this region. So this was done in H6, a very cute and influential uh, work. And then <coughs> this is the area law, the area law. The first, uh, this, yes, yes, by this group, the area law. And then later on, is Redick some years, he also did similar uh, work and similar nice argument, a risk argument, but some nice computation, Zrenitsky. And then this, all this area law discussion starts to pop up, become fashion up to today. So anyway, the, what I'm going to discuss here is that uh, I re recollect the how this Renier entanglement entropy for this very general class of free fermion chains and uh, its relation of this entropy with the uh, Riemann surface, compact Riemann surface. This, two years ago, there was this conference here organized by, again, Alvaro, Pasquale, and uh, it was quite nice uh, conference. And back then, I advertised that I wished to understand the relation of the formula that I had uh, obtained for this entanglement entropy and this complex uh, geometry, this Riemann. So two years later, I'm, so I'm now able to show this result. Uh, so I will show this relation and then discuss the properties of this Renier entanglement entropy under transformations, which are called Möbius transformation, on these surfaces. And uh, I do that in the non 
non-critical and critical theory. In the case of the critical theory, I can conjecture some uh, conformal transformations for the for the behavior of uh, entanglement entropy. Uh, these are some of the papers that uh, we did ask. My name is Amilcar. Amilcar de Queiroz. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me go. So, so what is the system that I'm interested? So this is just a 1D chain. This 1D chain. Uh, and then I have uh, these fermionic uh, operators that uh, create or destroy some uh, excitation here. And uh, I will treat with this class of Hamiltonians. They are quadratic, homogeneous translation variant, and with long-range couplings. So this is the most general Hamiltonian. This capital L, it describes the maximal range of the couplings. And uh, I have uh, these uh, hopping terms, AL, and these pairing uh, terms, couplings. Now, there are some, uh, what to also, not only this long range, what is new in our work is that we discuss when these couplings can become uh, complex. So, for instance, if uh, this coupling becomes uh, complex, then uh, it will appear this jalojinsky moria coupling, that, uh, because it breaks this reflection symmetry. If the pairing coupling, it's also, there is this imaginary part, then I also have some breaking of the charge conjugation. And we know that uh, if I remove BL, all BL, I have a fermionic number is preserved. So I can discuss this entropy formula for all these cases. Uh, so, what uh, I'm going to compute, given that system, what I'm going to compute? Uh, I consider, for instance, to bipartite the Hilbert space, and then I consider, for instance, the ground state, the whole system in a ground state, then uh, this bipartite, and I trace out, I ignore, I remove part of this series of freedoms, right? This allows me to construct uh, this uh, reduced density matrix associated to this X piece by integrating out these uh, degrees of freedom associated to the Y Hilbert space. Now I can then form this partition function, the trace of this reduced density matrix to some power. This is a Rene uh, partition function. If I take the log of this partition function, I get uh, the uh, Renier entanglement entropy. To when alpha goes to one, it's a singular limit, I get the von Neumann entropy. But uh, from the point of view of computation, this Renier is easier to compute, and then in the, in the end, I take this limit to, to one. So this is what I will compute for this class of system. Uh, of course, this was done for many people. Um, many people did that. For non critical chains, the special did. Vlad did some works. Uh, this Itzi, Metzadri, Mo, also they have done some for long range interaction. Uh, in the critical chains, the first was this people, La Torre in Kitaev, uh, also Gene Korepin, Vlad, and uh, we have also done some of this. Actually, this is the when you compute for the whole complex case. Now, what kind of problem? I mean, we have all this formula, it should be some years, but what kind of problem that I'm interested, that I want to report to you today? No, that is being specific. Let's take the simplest case. When I have a nearest neighbor's interaction, I have uh, this XY chain or kita F uh, chain. Nowadays, it's called kita F chain. No? Uh, so it has uh, this hopping terms. Despairing, gamma, and eight. And you know the phase diagram for this since a long time ago due to Baruch and McCoy. And uh, 
we one can compute this uh, entanglement entropy, and we have the following thing. This is a ga gapped uh, region, non-critical, here. And here, there is this critical line, which is in the universality class of Eisen model. There is this XX model, which is also critical. And uh, what, uh, for instance, Vlad found with collaborators is that uh, if you compute this SO, this entropy, you see that there is this conical where the uh, entropy doesn't change. So you go along these curves and the entropy does not change. They look that by looking at the formula. So there is some uh, Jacobi theta function and then uh, you study the symmetries of this Jacobi theta function and they found this uh, thing. Am I right? Thanks. So, uh, Huh? XY. This is XY model, and uh, well, this is the the parameter space H and gamma, and then the IZ model. IZ model is this uh, when gamma equal one. No, you have it here. This is the critical IZ model. Yeah, please. You're right. Of course. Yes. You're right. Yes. You're right. Okay, thanks. Ah, yeah, I have not said yeah, thanks. Uh periodic boundary conditions. No, I will consider only periodic boundary condition. Unfortunately, uh, the kind of meter, I will not talk about of the meter, but the meter that I use to solve this, it requires periodic boundary conditions. So it's to, it is possible to do with open boundary conditions, but then you have to do totally different technique. Okay? I, I will make it a bit clearer later on that. But thanks for the question. Uh, okay? So, my, my problem, my simple problem, is that uh, I would like to one to understand what is the origin of these curves. How can I understand the origin of these curves of constant entropy, or a conical or ellipses? And of course, not only for L for L equal one, but for the general class. That is my question. This is what I want to understand. And uh, coming from high energy physics, this to understand this question means to find the symmetry underlying these, uh, these curves. L is the range. Here is nearest neighbor, L equal one. If next neighbor, L equal two. Okay, so I want to know this, why? So let's uh, consider how I go to solve that. So consider the first, the simple, case, which is these are real, so no breaking of symmetry, of uh, reflection or charge conjugation symmetry are preserved. So well, I have my Hamiltonian and I have highlighted the couplings because uh, what the result of course depends on, on them and I want to see what happens to them when I go to the magnetic field, I mean it should be A0. Uh, so, the usual, I have to do Fourier transform, that's why periodic boundary conditions. And uh, because of this term, Bogolyubov transformation, then I diagonalize this Hamiltonian in terms of this Bogolyubov modes. Here the dispersion relation, and I see that it depends on this AL and BL as it should. That's very simple. And uh, I will consider the ground state. The ground state depends on the my dispersion relation is positive semi-definite, so like that. And uh, this is the ground state that I was talking about that I will do the tracing out. Now, I can, once I know this ground state for this case, I can form the correlation matrix, this correlation matrix, and there is some, this was shown again by Vlad and 
that I can write uh, this partition function as the determinant of some function associated to this correlation matrix. That means that uh, if I am able to, to find the spectrum or the eigenvalues of uh, this correlation matrix, I can compute this partition function. So the problem boils down to find uh, to just to diagonalize this correlation matrix, which is, uh, as usual, is very easy to talk, not to do. But uh, theta from minus p to p. Yes. Okay, so I have to diagonalize. So the difficult thing is to diagonalize this guy. But then there are some techniques that are a bit involved, but it doesn't, it's not important. But how it goes? In the thermodynamic limit, I can write uh, that matrix as uh, some sort of Fourier transform here. And again, that's why I have uh, to, do to work with the periodic boundary condition. Otherwise, I will not have uh, this, uh, this uh, structure. Now, this m of theta, with I mean, the Fourier transform of my correlation function, can be cast in this form, and uh, it is a very special kind of uh, matrix, which is a toplet matrix, and moreover, it's block toplet matrix. I will show what I mean by that. Uh, which depends on this f of theta and g of theta, and these guys depends on my coupling, al and bl. So it is here. Now, I have uh, to consider two, two cases. First case, when the, the system is gapped, so the lambda theta is strictly greater than zero, so this m of theta will be continuous. And, uh, and when it is, there is some, uh, when the system uh, is critical, then appears some uh, firm uh, momentum, so m of theta has some discontinuities. Okay, the, the result, it is, I will not talk uh, about, I just flash some words, but uh, this comes a uh, very famous uh, mathematical resource that was used by Onsaga, for instance, which goes as the name of uh, Sego theorem and fischer hortog theorem, and uh, Fischer and other also used to discuss phase transitions in IZ model and all that. So this is the kind of structure that emerged here. And uh, all these theorems, which are associated to the determinant, the, the asymptotic behavior of the determinant of the, those matrix, it, uh, it depends only on the analyticity properties of uh, these uh, functions. So it, that's why it's important to know if it is continuous or not here. Uh, so the Stoplitz matrix is a very cute uh, matrix that has all diagonal has the same entry. So there are if you one here, one, one in the diagonals. Zero, 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 zero. So these are toplet matrix. Now and uh, it is associated the correlation function are toplet matrix every time you have a translation variant uh, system. Now here, because of those Bogolyubov uh, transformation that I need, I have to have this block toplet that goes like that. So one, 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 zero, zero, zero here, but then it changes here, okay? This is a block toplet matrix, and I want to know the determinant of this guy to compute the entanglementary. Now, oh, non-critical Hamiltonian, no, this is the relation between the dispersion relation theta. So there is this gap, so this guy is continuous. Then I can use these famous theorems. Now, this is the, how it uh, associates to this uh, complex geometry. I take that uh, m of theta, uh, here this, m of theta, which is associates the Fourier transform of my correlation function, and it depends, theta is a, is a variable in a circle, so I consider some uh, analytical extension to the complex plane, so I form this m of zeta, zeta now is uh, some uh, complex number. And uh, now, this m zeta is a special function 
on some Riemann surface, compact Riemann surface form in this complex plane. And this complex, uh, this complex curve, it is given by the solutions of this equation, this algebraic equation. And again, this theta and this zeta, it depends on the, on the f and g. It depends on a and b. So now, there is a, then we found this cute uh, relation that uh, usually, for instance, an example of these complex curves are this a torus. Torus would be a genus one uh, surface. And uh, we, we realize, we can show that, that uh, the genus of our curve is associated to the range, maximum range of interaction. So for instance, for nearest neighbors, L equal one, so G equal one, and I have a torus. There is a, a nice way to represent that in the z-plane, which is to write this unit circle and the put these numbers, which are associated to the roots of this uh, curve here. So this is some uh, g equal three, some uh, three torus, if you like. It's a way to represent. Now, the roots of uh, this, uh, this algebraic equation, because of the symmetry of my Hamiltonian, they are constrained. So they are constrained, they have to have some uh, relations, like uh, uh, they should be related by conjugation and by inversion. That is, coming from the inside this to outside, they have uh, some uh, symmetries. So it's quite uh, constrained in the system. So now, what uh, we found, it's, uh, we have uh, studied this in different forms. I mean, for instance, Vlad has studied this, taken the, the form of the, the formula for the entropy in terms of theta function, found the symmetries. Here we did the difference. We don't need to solve it. What you need to do is to write our spectral problem, and uh, we write in a, in a fancy way, which is to construct this new operator, K, which represents that operator V, the, the correlation function. It's a bit uh, ugly, but I mean, there is some cute uh, relations here. And then we, this K is such that the, the, the partition function can be written in terms of its uh, uh, spectrum. But then K represents again V, uh, the correlation function. Now, what do we do, and it's quite, uh, I mean, I was quite proud to find that, is that uh, we can just uh, study the symmetries of this equation. We don't need to solve it. So this is quite a complicated equation to solve, but we don't need to solve it to find the, to find the property, the, sym the symmetries that I was trying to understand. We just so look at the symmetries here. So for instance, so I want to study this. This is just K act on V, and I want to know when it's lambda equal V, just a spectral problem. So this is K, is this uh, complicated operator, and I want to see what is its behavior un under these Möbius transformations, which is some transformations of, com of uh, Riemann surfaces. So we know that under these transformations, I can, for instance, an interval transforms like that, this is scale. And then I can take that k to k prime, which goes, transforms like that. Okay, very complicated, but the what is important is this v that comes from here. Now, I define some t, I can, I can find some, if I say that v, which is my, where I'm acting on, the my, my vector, if I say there is some operator that acts on v, with according to this formula to compensate to this guy, then I just find this similarity transformation, this conjugation. So the whole thing was to find this t. Now, moreover, I have uh, to say that I would consider those transformations t that doesn't spoil the, uh, I don't take uh, these points blue and I cross them across the unit circle because otherwise I would uh, break the structure of my Hamiltonian. So that is, uh, if the all of that is okay, 
then under those transformations, the entropy doesn't change. So this is what, uh, that was, uh, my opinion, quite a clever way to do it. Uh, alpha doesn't change. That is different to, with respect to your work. So it's for fixed alpha. You found or you change in alpha. Then you're changing the Rene parameter. Yeah? Okay? So we, we found, we have just to found this T's. And uh, then the we know how the, the flow of the entropy of constant entropy goes. Because the spectral, the, the determinant will not change because the determinant depends on the spectrum and the spectrum will be invariant on the similarity transformation. That's it. Uh, so, moreover, we have uh, this uh, SL2C, that uh, Möbius transformation, but we also, because of the, the symmetries of my Hamiltonian, the, the Hamiltonian that I start with, they are invariant on the inversion and uh, charge conjugation, I have uh, to commute, I have to force that the structure to, to be preserved. Then I don't have uh, the full Möbius transformation, but some subgroup of it, which are discrete, the discrete, these transformations, the inversion. Uh, conjugation and uh, reversion, uh, parity, and these, uh, this transformation, this SO11 transformation. And here, there is a very cute way to understand. Let me explain this diagram here. Because uh, we have, I mean, one point in my phase diagram, one point in my phase diagram corresponds, this is the Z diagram, correspond to some roots. There are one who root here, one root here, and this four. This is, for instance, for XY model, L equal one, nearest uh, neighbors. So I start with one point in my phase diagram, and then I start to move in the phase diagram. If that move in the phase diagram change H and gamma in the XY model is being doing by this transformation that takes us from here, it's, uh, these, uh, these roots, they are changing, and then you see how they move, and in the phase diagram, I have a correspondence. And they all go to the, they, they are repelled from this point, and they are attracted to this point, which is a special point when H is uh, one and gamma equals zero, for the, which is an essential singularity. So there is, we can see some sort of a renormalization group flow right, and how this entropy is changing. Now, all of that, I can make a... The, the entropy, the system changes, the system changes, but the entropy remains the same. For, but for a different system. No, because... Yes. No, 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 no. This, no, 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 no. The system is changed in the following sense. Uh, the coupling constants are being changed. I have a Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is defining my coupling constants. I'm changing the coupling constant, right? I'm changing the coupling constant in a way that under these transformations, the entropy doesn't change. So if there is this curves of constant, constant entropy. Okay, is it, is that a rainy entropy? But, uh, the rainy entropy is the same, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the Rainy entropy captures all the properties of the density mass. That is true. But uh, that's clear. No, the Hamiltonian has the, the let me put here. The Hamiltonian, the, there is this couplings. The couplings are changing. Of what? Yeah. Because, yeah, yes, yes. Because I'm changing. No, 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 wait, wait. The, 
the Hamiltonian. It's changing because I'm changing the Hamiltonian. I'm changing the Hamiltonian. I'm changing the Hamiltonian. So the, the ground state is changing because the ground state of a Hamiltonian with a fixed with, will depend on A, B, and B. A different system. Different system with same entropy by this flow, by this particular flow. Yes, uh, the, the, the change that uh, preserves the entropy, the Rayleigh entropy. No, not necessary. Yeah, if, uh, if I change, I mean, if, uh, uh, ah, here. If I, if I change, I mean, see, I'm, I'm in this point here, right? If I'm changing this direction, entropy is changing. The entropy, it is fixed. It doesn't change only if I go in this direction. Yeah. If if you if you land in this curve, if you do a jump, if you land in this curve, the entropy doesn't change. Yeah. Yeah. Then the entropy is the same. Okay. Okay. Then the uh, all. Yeah, please. For fix. If I change alpha, is a total difference problem. Huh? I have fixed alpha. I, I have fixed alpha. No, then the, the, it is the same. It's the same problem. It's not only XY model. OK, not only XY model. The whole class of system that I said I can. Uh, the, the proof that we gave is general. So, and he studied only XY, I studied general. It should be different. No, it should be different. Now, if it is quench, is a different thing. Then, uh, yeah, quench would be totally different thing. Okay. Yeah, nothing else. Okay, that the transformation. I mean, this is a con uh, all of this transformation. I can consider some vector representing this Hamiltonian. And uh, I have a, a representation of at this SL2C on these vectors, represent vectors con uh, containing the parameters of my Hamiltonian, the couplings. And I can see how the Hamiltonian is changing under this SL2C transformation. Okay, and still the entropy is the same. So this is a, and a cute thing is that uh, this is a spin L. L is the maximum range of the of uh, the interactions. So this is the my resin. So it's quite uh, cute. Uh, OK, summarizing. Then I can explain uh, Vlad's result. That uh, for the xy kit I have chain, I have a gamma and a eight as the my parameters. Here's so under these transformations, which is this SO11, which is a subgroup of SL2C, uh, transforms like that, I, uh, I can ask and I can form some invariant uh, with respect to this transformation with uh, this ratio, this cross ratio, and then if I organize, I see the appearance of those ellipses. Okay, so this is the conics of constant entropy and how it flows according to SO11. Changing the system because I'm changing gamma and eight, but the entropy the same. Yes. I don't know. I don't understand this question. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, okay, now if I take uh, this x uh, to infinite or to zero, then I can read this, crit this critical, this critical lines. Huh? x is this uh, invariant. 
Okay. So and uh, so because up to now I was only worried about the uh, gapped phase. So by taking these limits, in principle, I can study the what happens when the system becomes critical. And criticality here is is uh, being noticed by this log behavior with the, uh, the the part of the system that I'm integrating out. Okay, this is, uh, this is associated to, this, to the central charge, and this is the formula that uh, Tisalis was trying to, was quoting without knowing where it comes from. Uh, so, just as a, a different thing, since you talk about Dialoginsky Moria, for us, Dialoginsky Moria is just a, a breaking of reversal symmetry. We also, this is also, we studied this case. The, in that case, this is a Dialoginsky Moria, this coupling, IS, uh, this uh, imaginary part of here, it, uh, of uh, this diagram. So all of this region now becomes critical, gapless. Then uh, it's like a blow up of uh, these curves. Of this curve here, it, it is blowing up like that, and it forms all this region. So and this region is controlled by this S, which is this Dialoginsky Moria uh, parameters. Now, we outside this critical region, the formula for the entropy are pretty much the same as I, we have for the XY model. But uh, here now we, as a, we have we have numerics for the behavior of the entropy here, but you don't have a very good analytic formula for that. So. Anyway, this is a different thing. Now comes uh, the, the study of uh, critical theories. And uh, now, what happens in the critical theory? There is appear these Fermi points here, like these two. It also can have the case there is only one uh, Fermi point. But in terms of this uh, Riemann surface, this is the same as appearing this kind of uh, pinching. I mean, the, the roots of my uh, equation that defines the, the, the surface, they start to pinch like that, and they pinch in this unit circle. So in this case, I can uh, label u1, u2, and so on by these pinching points. And we conjecture so, uh, that uh, under this SO11 transformation, the Rainy partition function behaves as a homogeneous function, depend on this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let me call it parti Rainy partition function. Thanks. Uh, so this is, uh, we conjecture that. I mean, why you can say that? Because we know that in the critical, in the critical, region, the entropy behaves as this log piece plus some constant. And in front of the log term, there will be the central charge. So of course, then, th which means that if I take the log of this uh, expression, I will get this formula here, how it transforms. This is associated to the central charge and this extra piece, which is usually is a constant. Yeah. My conjecture, not my hour. There's a group of people. Yes, and uh, so we can prove that uh, for the case of uh, when uh, there is the pairing is zero, uh, like for instance the XX model, using some formula that you know. This is that because in this case you can compute everything uh, analytically, and there is this X. This is again associated to the central charge, which is one in this case, and there is this constant term, but it constant in the sense that it doesn't depend on the size of the system. Uh, but it depends on eight, on the uh, magnetic field. So as I move eight, I change this. And then we can stu study that. Say it again. Capital X. Capital X is the region I'm integrating out. I'm tracing. OK? Then there is two. Then there is two pinchings, like uh, 
this one. There are two pins like this one here for this case. And then we can see that this formula works well. That is a uh, there is also the case when I go to the eyes in line, eyes in critical line, there, is, there will be only one pinching. Then we can also say. I, I repeat, I repeat. Go on. You can say, say. Yes, the appearance of the uh, Fermi point. Here. Yes, the close, yes, yes, the exactly, like, yes, perfect. See, I had a gap when it was like that, then I start to close the gap until it uh, reaches this, this curve, uh, uh, meets the zero, the real. It was like that. It was so I had something like that, right? So I start to move this as I move this curve down. Some deforming it is the same as change the position of uh, these these roots here, these blue dots. Until I can get some uh, structure like that. I mean, I can turn that guy in something that go like that. And, and these are my two Fermi points. Okay? Yeah, the, the gap has been closed in these two points. Here, the two points is the closing of the gap. And those two points correspond to corresponds to this pitching. Yes. Okay. Then is the the system is gapped. Okay. I'm about to finish. Okay. So we this was our conjecture of uh, then you check it numerically. Here is some uh, there are many of these. Uh, graphs in the in the works, but uh, here just to see these uh, see this is these red points correspond to this here uh, some uh, fiducial choice just to and then I I start to do to to move these red things along which correspond to the pinchings I start to move them along this unicircle so I just start to change the the Fermi points. Just move the Fermi points. Okay? This is then uh, we produce numerically circles and we take and uh, we adjust to fit this this uh, point, numerical points with our formula. And uh, it is it seems to work. There is some problems here, but uh, this is due to finite size uh, effects because we cannot go I mean this formula is valid for all uh, large x. So we are having this finite x, so there will be some uh, problems here. But I mean, so we have a mean of this uh, curve, so I think that our conjecture is quite, uh, at least from a numerical point of view, is perfect. I cannot uh, have a better explanation than that. Uh, now, just to start and finish, we also consider the case of multi intervals that I have uh, before I was considered only one interval and I will I was tracing tracing out only one interval now I can consider many like uh, this collection of intervals and doing the tracing out uh, so there is this X are the end points of each interval no? so and then I also can compute my my rainy partition function associated to this reduced density matrix. And we realize there is, again, based on the previous formula, I have uh, the same kind of formula here. It's the same. But also, I can consider a conformal transformation in X space. I can move the 
this interval by some conformal transformation. So here I'm uh, here I'm doing a, a transformation, a flow, on the pinchings on this momentum space. But also I can also consider for these multi intervals uh, the conformal transformation of, of uh, this x point, the at uh, the end points, the end points. So and then we find again it's conjecture, but check the numerically we can find uh, this this formula. And we can even combine them, this formula, into a, ge a general formula. And uh, so every, every, and then we can start to entertain the possibilities of some uh, dualities between position and momentum. We can start to entertain this possibility. But uh, that we have uh, not uh, uh, studied more. We can even consider some other group in the X that uh, changes this X, uh, changing the transformation of this X and all, but we have not uh, considered. And uh, finally, uh, I think it's fine. Okay, just to, not a sort of resource that we can find. There are lots of dualities here in this, uh, I mean, once we found all this Möbius transformation, we can start to entertain some uh, other dualities. For instance, uh, we see that uh, this point in this curve and this point in this curve, they are dual th theories. They are dual theories, and they have uh, the same entropy. So they are in different phases, if you like, because this is the phase 1b, this is the 1a, separated by this curve, which is baruch makoy this is the baru Markoy circle. That is the crossover between these two phases. And then you see that the entropy here and here are the same by some uh, duality. It's quite uh, cute. And uh, there is even one thing that is called triality. Uh, that if I take this, this is in one phase. This is a different phase. I take this point in this phase. I take this uh, what this phase. And then I find the sum of the entropy of these two is equal to that. This is looks like some uh, uh, mystic thing, but I mean, but all of that comes from uh, basic group theory, and uh, then you can. Uh, we found it. This is what I'm just showing the the. Yeah. This is, I mean, I'm showing just the graph. All of that is in, is in terms of uh, formulas of theta <laughs> function and all that. I mean, this, uh, I have to hide this formula. No, otherwise it should be too ugly. Okay? So there are these kind of uh, dualities in these models. So that is uh, a part of what we have done. Ah, some conclusions, but anyway, uh, thanks a lot. <laughs>